Hello and welcome. Shadow Slide Tuesday. <gasps> Yippee! It's here. Nom nom. Finally. No. <laughs> Corny bar left, so I'm eating it. Now make food after the stream. Mm -hmm. mm. So, <laughs> fine. Have a little bit. Here you go. Enjoy. I'm once again doing laundry, laundry while streaming, as is tradition. Hello. Uh, but this program takes a lot longer. It will probably be fine. Mm. And I have nowhere to put the the wet laundry anyway. <laughs> so I'll just let it be there. Until I fix it. Like soon after, of course, but like after stream, it, it will it will survive. Mm. So the next chapter, I got told 
it's a little bit weird because right now it's not a spoiler because it's gonna happen right now mm. but i want to say this for people who might potentially um just watch the youtube videos so if you want to skip ahead in the future that's not there yet <laughs> um uh, where is it i need to find it because mm. we're now going to start chapter what is it 96 yes uh there's now going to be a time skip um um so if you potentially would like to read it without the time skip because it's unnecessary <laughs> um the time skip will be between chapter 96 and chapter 122 and so what happened after chapter 95 is actually chapter 123 so <laughs> to 168 so depending on how you want to do it then choose whichever um way you want to do it but i'm gonna read it starting off at continuing just how he released them even though it's unnecessary <laughs> mm. so it will be weird now but it's supposed to be this way um ah i bit my mouth and i just felt a little ouch okay getting off track yes it's fine don't be confused time skip is happening the next episode is the next episode the next chapter is going to be very weird because it had nothing to do with <laughs> <laughs> ah <laughs> That's such a me thing to do, Catrice. It really is. <laughs> you don't realize how how amazing that was. <laughs> um, but whatever. We're gonna continue as the episodes were chapters, not episodes, were put out. So, continuing with the second volume of Shadow Slave. Time skip. Chapter 96. Not 96. 96. Exile. Let's go. Wake up, Sunless. Your nightmare is... Shut the hell up. Trying to remain in the blissful embrace of sleep, Sunny hissed for his teeth and stubbornly closed his eyes tighter. He was warm and comfortable under the blanket, on his own bed, where all the problems of the world seemed less serious and dire. For a moment, there was silence. That's better. Wake up, Sunless. You're... God damn it. Thrusting one arm from one... No. Thrusting one arm from under the blanket, Sunny summoned one of his memories. Immediately, a triangular leaf-shaped throwing dagger appeared in his hand, only to be thrown blindly at the source of the irritating voice. Missing its mark, the kunai clinked against the stone wall and fell to the floor. However, the voice did fall silent. Sunny sighed. It was already too late. He was awake. Far in the distance, the waves were starting to crash against the city wall. The night was coming, so it was time to get up. Opening his eyes, Sunny sat up and looked around. His room was beautiful and spacious. The stone walls were engraved with intricate patterns, creating an atmosphere of sanct... Sanct... Sanctity. <laughs> like sanctuary, I understand, but... S 
sanctity and elegance. The furniture was made out of pl pale polished wood with several mismatched pieces that Sonny had scavenged from different places himself. The room had no windows, however. There were lights well there were light wells cunningly hidden here and there. Sadly, the ingenious system of mirrors that was supposed to bathe the hidden chamber in sunlight was long destroyed, leaving only darkness inside. Sunday didn't mind. In fact, this was one of the features of his sacred lair that he enjoyed the most. Darkness was his best friend. Yawning, he stood up and rubbed his face to chase away the last remnants of sleep. His long, dirty hair was getting in the way, so he moved it back. Let's make some breakfast. But first things first. Sonny moved his hand, pulling on the invisible string that connected his wrist to the ring-shaped pommel of the kunai. The throwing dagger jumped into the air and landed on his palm. This was a, this was a trick that had taken Sonny quite some time to master. In the beginning, he almost lost a couple of fingers while trying to learn how to control the flying blade. Walking over to a wall empty of engravings, he used the kunai to scratch a small line into the stone. All around it, there were dozens and dozens of similar lines, grouped neatly into sets of five. It had already been four months since Sunny came to this loathsome, godforsaken city. Many things had happened during that time. Cass's vision turned out to be true. Far in the west, they indeed found a vast, ruined city surrounded by tall walls, with monsters wandering its narrow streets, and in the center of the city there was a hill with a magnificent castle standing on its top. Miraculously, the castle, the castle was full of people. However, they weren't awakened, as the three of them had hoped. Instead, they were, each and every one of them, mere sleepers. Because there were no gateway in the castle. Hundreds of humans, those who had managed to survive the lethal hellscape of the Forgotten Shore due to their strength or luck, were stuck there with no hope of, even, of ever returning to the real world. It was nothing but a graveyard of hope. Remembering his first days in the castle, Sonny couldn't help but laugh out loud. Oh, what a fool he had been. So full of hope and newfound faith in humanity. Where's that faith now, huh? Laughing hysterically, he bent over and slapped his knees. <laughs> I can't see it, but okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Good one, Sonny. What do you think about that, eh, buddy? The shadow didn't respond, staring at him with reproach. Its silence only made Sonny laugh louder. He just couldn't stop. To be honest, he had gone a little bit insane some time ago. Probably around his third week of living alone in the city. He was more or less alright after leaving the castle due to that unfortunate falling out with... Well, it didn't matter. The point was that on his third week, that damn bastard of a knight had almost disemboweled him, leaving Sonny no choice but to crawl away while using his own two hands to stop his intestines from falling out. After finding his way to a secluded ditch and lying there for a few days, too weak to move and simply waiting to die, with not a soul around to help him, Sonny wasn't quite the same. Wait, can you hear that? No, you can't. Good. <laughs> The washer is going insane again. Okay, no, we can't see that. Okay, good. Um, good times. Anyway, he survived. Dismissing the kunai, Sunny walked over to a table that he had scavenged from the ruins of lib, lib that he had scavenged from the ruins of a library, and glanced at the gray rock that was lying in its center. No matter how you looked at it, it was just an ordinary rock. However, as soon as Sunny's gaze fell on it, the rock spoke. Wake up, Sunless. Your nightmare is over. That rock was, in fact, one of his most valuable memories. In all ways except for one. It was indeed just a rock, which was already useful enough. What the fuck? He has a rock and a bell now, a rock that speaks. <laughs> huh? There were a lot of things that someone as devious as Sunny could accomplish with the help of a rock. However... This particular rock was also capable of parroting different sounds, which made it simply priceless. Oh. Right now, it was parroting Sunny's own voice. Wake up. Oh, it's his fucking alarm clock. <laughs> <You're> gonna... <sighs> you vile thing. 
Struggling with the ir irrational desire to turn the parrot rock into dust, Sunday dismissed it and removed a piece of cloth from the table. Beneath it, a few strips of monster meat lay on a silver platter. He had hunted this monster himself, which was not an easy task in these parts. In fact, as far as Sunny knew, he was one of the very few people capable of hunting in the city alone. The reason for this was that most of the nightmare creatures populating it were of the fallen rank, with only a handful of weaker ones hiding here and there. No one was crazy enough to hunt the fallen monsters. Instead, large hunting parties used experienced guides to avoid these powerful creatures while searching for easier prey. But to Sunny, singling out stray awakened monsters were comparatively easy. He hunted at night, using deep shadows to make himself nothing short of invisible. If he didn't want to fight a fallen abomination, he didn't have to, most of the time. In any case, he never went hungry. Sunny grinned and said in a deeply satisfied tone, Ah, life is good. <laughs> okay, he's stuck in the castle. Uh, okay, I was like, ah, oh, there will be something here, but no, just the discord. Okay, he has a kunai. He has a rock now that speaks, a parrot, a parrot rock, and we're stuck in a castle, there was no gate, sad, and he's alone. Cassie and uh, Neff is gone somewhere, seem to be falling out. And we're just here now. He just do be living here, enjoying life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, his intestines are fine. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I like this. We shall continue. Oh, chapter 97. Hunter's Dream. Life indeed was good. In fact, Sunny would even go so far as to say that currently it was wonderful. One would expect that being stuck in a cursed city located in the middle of an actual hell surrounded by nothing but ruins and horrifying monsters was not really the best way to live your life. <laughs> ah, I wouldn't say so. But to him, this was somewhat of a paradise. To his surprise, Sunny had found out that this type of existence suited him pretty well. He had no obligations, no need to worry about the future, and most importantly, was not required to interact with other humans. Yes. Being on your own was much better. He didn't have... No, humans always made things hard and complicated. He was sick of them. But he seemed down when he's like, oh, they're falling out with... Hmm. Oh, whatever. Being on your own was much better. He didn't have to pretend to be someone else, force himself to behave differently from how he wanted to and strain his mind trying to understand people's convoluted feelings. For the first time in his life, Sonny could simply be himself. Turns out, his true self was very easy to please. He had no shortage of interesting things to do, explore and kill. His life was very entertaining and comfortable, all things considered. It was at least way better than his pathetic existence in the outskirts, back in the real world. The key to this harmonious feeling was very simple. It was to have it was to have no hope. Sunday discovered that hope was the true enemy of peace. It was the most vile and poisonous thing in the, in the universe. If there was even a glimmer of hope to return home, he would have been desperate, full of anxiety, and probably in the middle of some insane disaster right now. Like he had always been before. But without hope, things were simple and pleasant. He really couldn't wish for more. <laughs> Hello. Keep telling yourself this crap. You might really believe it. Sunny grinned. What is there to believe? It's the truth. The shadow silently shook its head, long accustomed to his crazy tiredness. Tirades? Tirades? Tirades. Let's see. Tirade. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Tirades. A long, angry speech 
of criticism or accusation. Ah. I see. Where was it? Mm. It was crazy. What was it say? Tirades? Mm -hmm. Like, sure. No. Tirades. <laughs> Lately, Sonny had been talking with himself a lot, having long arguments that somewhat that sometimes descended into screaming matches. It was a good way to pass the time. What the fuck? A bit later, he emerged from his secret chamber. Sunny's lair was situated in the upper parts of a ruined cathedral, the entrance hidden behind a tall statue of some unknown goddess. There was a small balcony that allowed him to observe the grand hall of the temple over the goddess's shoulder, concealed from sight by the strands of her stone hair. The balcony was really high above the floor, making it impossible for any creature to climb on it by accident. Falling down would certainly kill a normal human. Okay, Mojo. Thank you so much for coming to the stream. Enjoy it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Accidentally got a small bike. That's how he and the bastard had become neighbors. The bastard was, in fact, the guardian of this place. He patrolled the Grand Hall, killing anyone who dared to come inside. Sunny saw plenty of powerful nightmare creatures fall to his sword, cleaved apart without much effort. Of course, the bastard was a nightmare creature of considerable power himself. Sunny was pretty sure that he was at least a devil. Sharing the cathedral with the devil was very convenient. Sunny could sleep easy knowing that no monster would be able to reach the inner sanctum alive. Of course, he had to be careful to never be seen by this by his murderous roommate. There was a fly right in front of me. Um, I'm in Die. <laughs> On the upside, he could observe the devil as much as he wanted, waiting for a chance to exact, exact his revenge. Senna was hellbent on killing the damn knight eventually. The bastard had to die. But before that, Sunny had to become stronger. Much, much stronger. Walking across the beams of the cathedral, he approached a hole in the roof and climbed through it. Outside, the night was already raining over the world. It was time to hunt. <gasps> do, 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 do. Monster hunter! <laughs> a skeletal, hunched figure was slowly walking along the narrow street of the cursed city. The creature had long arms that ended with vicious claws and a deformed head with a wide mouth full of razor-sharp fangs. Even with its back bent, the monster was at least two meters tall. It was dressed in a torn shroud that was once white, but had long ago turned brown from the dried blood. This was Sunny's prey. The creature, which was called a blood fiend, was among the weakest dwellers of the cursed city. It was merely an awakened monster, barely intelligent and comparatively, and comparatively easy to kill. Of course, Nothing was really easy to kill here. After all, each and every human on the Forgotten Shore was just a dormant beast. Despite the fact that they shared the same rank and class, blood fiends were less formidable than Carapus centurions in terms of strength and speed. However, that was only until the sm they smelled the blood, which sent them into a murderous frenzy. In that state, these fiends were a true menace. Most on the world. Ugh, yes. I want to play Monster Hunter again too. Maybe I'll do it soon. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe me. <laughs> Pathetic, Sunny thought, stalking the nightmare creature from the shadows. He had killed a few of these monsters <gasps> in the past and had a great time each time. <laughs> well, except for this one encounter where he, had ex where he had accidentally scratched himself on a sharp stone. That was not fun at all. Time to die, you ugly freak. <laughs> wow. <laughs> ugly and freak. <laughs> Crazy. The blood fiend was just about to turn the corner when a sudden sound attracted his attention. With unnatural speed, the monster turned around and fell on all fours, 
his sensitive ears picking up the slightest rustle. Then he took a few careful steps forward and stopped at a certain spot. In front of the feet, an ordinary-looking rock was lying on the ground. A second later, the rock suddenly spoke. Behind you, it said politely. The creature froze for a moment, then turned around and lightning with lightning fast speed. Something whistled in the air, and the upper part of the blood fiend's body separated from the lower. Still refusing to die, the monster reached out with its long arms. Too slow. Wow. <laughs> Sunny slashed with the midnight shard, severing one of the arms at the elbow. Continuing the motion, he took a quick step forward and performed another strike, this time piercing the creature's skull. The tip of the tai chi entered through one of its eyes and excited, exited through the back of the head. Ah, why the eyes? Uh... <laughs> All of it took less than a second. By the time both parts of the monster fell to the ground, Sunny had already retrieved his sword. Looking up with expectation, he smiled and waited. Come on, say it! As if answering his call, the spell whispered. Damn, he's starting to get fucking cocky. You have slain an awakened monster, Blood Fiend. Your shadow grows stronger. Sunny grinned. And thank you kindly. You're so sweet. Okay. <laughs> now he's nice. <laughs> The runes shimmered as they appeared in the air in front of him. Looking down, he read, Shadow Fragments, 398 out of a thousand. Just two fragments away from 400. These days, he was progressing at a very respectable speed. In the beginning, back when he had not known the city and the creatures that populated it, Sunny was lucky to get a few fragments in a week. He had also been much more prone to ending up bloodied and one step away from death. But now, things were slowly changing. He couldn't even remember the last time he felt compelled to say goodbye to life. Ah, you idiot. You just had to go and think that out loud, huh? Just as he finished the thought, a distant sound of footsteps reached his ears. <gasps> so he turned out... He has turned into a big of a bigger asshole. <laughs> or maybe just a lot more self-centered all of a sudden. Then again, that was kind of his trait from the beginning and didn't really ever stop, but it became less in your face when he talked to other people. <laughs> and when he like actually somewhat cared about them. Now it's just like, ah, whatever. Yes, and he d that's true. He did say that he is crazy now, too. So he's crazy now, I guess. Interesting. Okay. Well, continuing. <laughs> and now 100% chapters are fucking shorter. Hmm. Chapter 98. Uninvited guests. Sunny looked grimly at the corpse of the blood fiend then in the direction of the approaching footsteps. Who was crazy enough to remain in this cursed city during the night? Only a complete lunatic would do something that stupid, like him. All the sane people were long gone from the streets, not to mention that very few were willing to enter the ruins to begin with. A dark shadow flowed from the tip of the midnight charge blade, coalescing on the ground. It stared at him with sarcasm. Sunny stared back. What? The shadow shook its head and didn't answer, forcing him to turn away with a confused shrug. Whatever. Ah, it seems we have guests. What to do, what to do. The place is a mess. Looking around, Sunny sighed, glanced at the corpse of the monster once again, and summoned the kunai. The smart thing to do was to run away. Who knew what exactly was producing these footsteps? Maybe it was a group of people. Maybe it was a nightmare creature with a lot of feet. It was better not to find out. But he wasn't done with the hunt yet. He still had to get his trophies. Okay. <laughs> Go take a look. Sending the shadow away, Sun kneeled and began to cut the tough flesh of the dead creature. Without the enhancing effect of the shadow, slicing the blood fiend apart was not as easy. However, he still managed to find the first soul shard rather quickly. One more to go. Meanwhile, the shadow had discovered uninvited visitors. 
six humans who are cautiously walking along the narrow path in stone ruins, lighting their way with a ghostly blue lantern. Lantern. I thought first that like it's like oh I need to get my rewards like what the fuck is he gonna get like the ear or you know like some weird shit, but it's like ah oh, the the soul shard. I can accept that. It's like yes, of course, get them. Hey hey. So now it's not as weird, but it's still fuck. <laughs> They were all rugged men, wearing mismatched suits of armor and armed to the teeth. Their eyes were cold and hard. Sunny raised his eyebrows. My oh my, they really are people. What is a bunch of gun logs... Gun logs thug, thugs doing outside the castle walls in the middle of the night? How do we get gun log or gun log? Let's say gun log. Gunnlaug was the owner of the castle and the self-proclaimed king of this odious place. Oh, a king. Every sleeper on the Forgotten Shore was forced to either serve him or pay him tribute. Even still, the latter usually didn't live long. Dismissing the Midnight Shard and the Pirate Rock, Sunny concentrated on searching for the second Soul Shard. He wanted to be gone from the street before these gentlemen arrived. But the circle of blue light was approaching too fast. Finally, catching a glimpse of the growing, glowing crystal, Sunny grabbed it and hurriedly hid it in his armor. Then he dropped the kunai on the ground and took several steps back. But it was too late. They had already seen him. Be careful! There's a monster! As Sunny was backing away, several weapons were aimed in his direction. Feeling that thing were about to get out of... <gasps> oh, did I say it? So close to VIP. Yay! Thank you so much, Dragon, for the resub. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <gasps> VIP. You will get it. I believe. I believe. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and I read something and I read it wrong. Oh, there. Feeling that things were about to get out of control, he cleared his throat and said in a trembling voice, Oh my god, are you kidding? The washer is done? There's no way. There's actually no way it's gonna... Oh, fuck it. Okay, I'll go turn it off. Be right back. I just had to pet the dog. He did say that while crazy, right? I mean, he is insane. <laughs> There's a monster. It's like he said in a trembling voice. What? The fucking washer's done? <laughs> huh? I was trembling a little bit. But it, the, the washer thingies won't get moldy in like... How long do I have left? Like one and a half hours. So it's, it's fine. It's fine. It will be fine. Oh, you have blood. Ugh. Getting in reading position. <gasps> mm. uh, he cleared his throat <clears throat> and said in a trembling voice, Oh, oh, please don't hurt me. I'm a human. <laughs> no, I wasn't trembling. I'm a human. Saying this, he mentally looked himself over. With his ghostly pale skin and dirty hair, his ragged armor covered in layers of dried and flesh blood, Sunny was indeed easy to mistake for a nightmare creature. He wasn't really paying much attention to personal hygiene and appearance these days. Hopefully, speaking in a human language would prove his identity. Raising his hands to show that he wasn't armed, Sunny took another step back. Wait, speaking in a human language? 
he's mo multilingual now. <laughs> what other language would he speak? Oh, oh, okay. I guess they meant he means like oh because he spoke at all. Then they will be like oh it's a human because it spoke. <laughs> I guess maybe that's what he meant. Not that he can speak more languages. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> the six sleepers were really surprised to see another human this far away from the walls of the castle. Especially at night. Using their momentary confusion, he cautiously moved even further away. Don't move. Finally able to comprehend the situation, one of the castle inhabitants hissed a threatening command. Sunny obediently froze. Careful not to make any sudden movements. It will be interesting because since he can't lie. I wonder what will happen. The unexpected guests proceeded to come closer, glancing at the corpse of the blood fiend as they walked past it. One of them was taller and better equipped than the rest. Piercing Sunny with a menacing gaze, he approached him and stopped one or two steps away. The man was older than Sunny by a few years. He was tall and muscular with a patchy beard covering the lower part of his face and a mean look in his watery blue eyes. From his demeanor and memories, it was, easy to tell to, uh, it was easy to tell that the leader of the group had spent no less than three years on the Forgotten Shore. He had experience and time to grow, he had experience and time to grow stronger than the most sleepers here. However, it was also apparent that he wasn't really high up in the ranks of Gunlog's army. Otherwise, his equipment would have been much more impressive. Still, the heavy battle axe that was resting on the man's shoulder looked really sharp. It would take him only a second to bring that thing down on Sunny's head. Who are you? What the hell are you doing here? Sunny blinked a couple of times, then gulped and answered carefully. Um, I'm Sunless. I live here. The leader of the hunting party, if that's what it was, narrowed his eyes. What? Live here? Do you take me a fool, boy? No one can survive in the city. The other sleepers were of the same opinion. Wait, what the fuck? Where do they live then? What? Ha? <laughs> huh? Okay. The other sleepers were of the same opinion, except for one who looked at Sunny with doubt. Frowning, he took a step forward and said in an uncertain tone. Wait, Sheev, he might be telling the truth. I heard that there's a crazy kid who lives in the ruins alone. <laughs> That's me. Oh, the castle. Uh -huh. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, so the castle within the city. I see. I get it. The taller man scowled. How is that possible? His subordinate glanced at Sunny and shrugged. From what I heard... His aspect allows the boy to hide in the shadows really well. I guess he crawls around like a rat and picks up the leftovers after the monsters are done eating. I don't really know, but someone was talking about him back in the castle. I thought they were just telling tales. Sunny frowned. Crazy. Boy. Rat. Why did everyone feel compelled to call him names? <laughs> if he kills all of them. <laughs> Meanwhile, the helpful sleeper thought for a bit and added. I think he came into town with that bitch, Changing Star. What? Huh? Intrigued? Sunny's frown turned into a scowl. Looking down, he whispered to his shadow. These guys are really very rude, don't you think? Of course, his whisper was easily heard by everyone around. The sleeper stared at him in confusion. <laughs> Sunny tilted his head a little and opened his eyes wide, as if shocked by something. And then have a smile grin, and he asked, Hmm. <laughs> what did you say? Say it again, please. What? You think I should kill them all? I mean, isn't it a little bit over the top? I should give them a chance to apologize at least. See, <laughs> that's what I said! He's crazy! The leader of the hunting party took a step forward and said in a low, growling voice, What are you mumbling about, rat? Sunny looked at him with scorn and dissatis 
with scorn and dissatisfaction. Hey, I was talking to my buddy. Can you please not interrupt? A wide, dangerous smile appeared in the tall man's face. With a sigh, Sunny turned to him and said, All right, if you insist. You guys have off offended my dearest friend, Nephis of the Immortal Flame Clan. She and I are very, very close. Okay, time skip. <laughs> Explain, hello. <laughs> hmm. So at least Nephis entered the city then. Yeah, or the castle or whatever. Hmm. I mean, she did survive the... She did uh, survive the waters. So I assume, but then again, Cassie's... Vision. Uh, okay. Um, she and I are very, very close. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you one chance to apologize for calling her a... Well, you know. If you don't, say goodbye to your lives. The older man stared at him for several seconds, then suddenly raised his head and laughed. Oh, that's a good one. Have you heard, guys? This tiny weasel will give us a chance. How generous. Should we be generous too, huh? What do you say? The boy is sick in the head after all. The other fire sleepers were not sharing his enthusiasm. One of them smiled darkly and said, No, chief. I think we should just kill him. Put the poor fool out of his mystery, you know? Mystery. Put the poor fool out of his misery, you know? The sleeper that had corrob corroborated Sonny's story before, meanwhile, was frowning again. Wait, guys, he's one of Changing Star's people, remember? The original group. I mean, they had survived two entire months in the labyrinth on their own. We shouldn't underestimate the- However... The leader interrupted him with a contemptuous scoff. I heard that Saint Nephis carried two useless sacks of shit on her back all the way to the castle. The bitch is fond of taking care of weaklings, right? That delicious little friend of hers is blind, for God's sake. I'm sure that this one is no better. Damn, fucking Guilty 3 went to another level <laughs> with volume 2. <laughs> PG. <laughs> like, what, what the fuck? Is <laughs> sure, there were, like, swears before, but, like, this is, this is, uh, he, he's stepped up. Not stepped up, as if it's a good thing, but it's like, it... he changed, man, he changed. <laughs> For the better. <laughs> then, he turned to Sonny and grinned. I tell you what, rat. Give us all your memories and we'll be generous enough to let you live. If an awakened died, their memories disappeared with them. Oh. The only way to get the memories was to make the owner transfer them of their own free will. However, whether or not that will, that will was affected by coercion or torture didn't really matter. At least not to people like these. Sonny blinked. So, you're not going to apologize. The tall man grinned. I think not. Yeah, they're gonna die. Sunny sighed. Oh well, so you want my memories, eh? <laughs> you want my memories, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Dumb! Okay. I have a few. Let me think. Um, how about this one? Lowering one hand, he summoned the parrot rock. It immediately appeared on his palm, looking as boring and ordinary as always. The leader of the hunting party frowned, not taking his eyes away from Sunny's face. Despite his crude exterior, he was paranoid and careful. Years of experience had taught him to never lower his guard. A moment later, the rock spoke. Behind you! That was the most basic of tricks. The tall man grinned, still looking Sunny in the eyes. Do you really think that I would fall for... However... Before he was done talking, the blade of the kunai hit him from behind, the shadow, penetrating the back of the man's skull and killing him on the spot. <gasps> oh! Your shadow grows stronger. <laughs> I wonder if that would happen with, with sleepers since these are like, they're the same. Because hmm. in the nightmare, first... 
and then it was because uh, those weren't quote unquote real people. That's what they told us at least. Um, but these are like oh, they're sleepers. Guess we'll see. Guess we'll see. Very nice so far. <laughs> Chapter 99. Pursuit. Sunny had dropped the throwing dagger near the monster's body in advance and then took all the, those steps back to make this exact situation possible. Bullshit. <laughs> as soon as the pirate rock spoke, he pulled on the invisible string. Sending the kunai flying back in his direction. Ah, it wasn't the shadows. Shadow, my bad. I was like, damn, the shadow can fucking move things? The tall bastard didn't just happen to be in its path either. You have slain. The leader of the hunting party really should have listened to that rock. Shadows, shadow grows stronger. Oh, it does. Interesting, interesting. Before the sleepers even had time to react, Sunny was already moving. The shadow had been wrapped around his body a long time ago, making him that much faster. Summoning the Midnight Shard, he fluidly slashed at the nearest enemy, severing the man's arm at the elbow. The blade struck right between the Vambrans, Vambrans on, and the cou counter of his enhanced, enchanted plate armor. The blade struck right between the Vambrans. The Vambrans. Vam fucking shit! The blade struck right between the Vambrans. And the counter of his enhanced. No. The blade struck right between the vambrace and the counter of his enchanted plate armor. <laughs> to Sunny, these people were slow and clumsy, their power level and technique severely lacking. He had already been more experienced than them after the harrowing journey through the Crimson Labyrinth learning how to wield the sword in combat from Changing Star herself. Wait, they said she's a sh saint, and I was like, oh, whatever. She's a saint. Damn. I mean, not surprised. <laughs> but damn. The three months he had spent hunting and surviving alone in the cursed city only made the gap that much wider. Despite looking like easy prey, Sunny was anything but. However, he wasn't foolish enough to challenge all five of them. People might have been weaker than nightmare creatures, uh, but what made them really dangerous was their unpredictability. Yes. Each aspect was unique, arming humans with a formidable arsenal of inexplicable abilities. Facing something you couldn't understand was the surest way to end up dead. True. With his advantage of surprise gone, Sunny decided that it was time to retreat. Turning around, he jumped out of the circle of light and ran. It was really hard to pursue someone who could see in the dark and the on these narrow streets. So there was a real chance of escaping unscathered. However, the kunai was still attached to Sunny's wrist. Sliding out of the dead leader's skull, it fell to the ground and clinked loudly against the stones. Then jumped a few meter meters away and hit the pavement again creating more noise. Why can't you just fucking recall it? <laughs> Retract the memory? I don't remember what they say. Recall? Get the bastard. He killed the sheaf. Following the sound of metal striking against stone, the sleepers lunged forward, following in Sunny's footsteps. <laughs> Dismiss. Thank you. <laughs> what a persistent bunch. Even the guy who had lost his arm was on his heels, either having a way to stop the, e either having a way to stop the bleeding, or simply unwilling to let the attacker escape, even if it cost him his own life. Hiccup. This part of the city was Sunny's hunting ground. He knew every nook and cranny of these streets like his own five fingers. Honestly, he wasn't sure where these guys were even thinking. If it wasn't for him carefully choosing the path, they would have ended up disturbing some terrifying fallen creature and becoming its dinner a long time ago. Something wasn't quite right here. Gunlog's people might have gun yeah, Gunlog. Gunlog's people might have been thugs, 
but they were experienced and accomplished hunters. They feared the city and knew how to behave while outside, while outside the castle walls. Otherwise, all of them would have been dead a long time ago. Come to think of that, it was extremely rare to see them going anywhere near the city at night. Were these fools even real hunters? If not, what were they up to? Sunny briefly considered leaving one of them alive to interrogate later, but then decided against it. To be honest, he wasn't really curious. Human business had long ago lost its allure in his eyes. Getting spammed? We just need to see if it's work. It was, but I'm not gonna look. La 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 la. Sunny briefly considered leaving one of them alive to interrogate later, but then decided against it. To be honest, he wasn't really curious. Human business had long ago along its allure in his eyes. He had much more interesting things to do. The dog scared me. I have a new dog today. Yay. <laughs> As you can tell from the picture, though. It's a little bit bigger, I think. <laughs> Finally reaching his goal, Sunny lingered on the steps, pretending to be in a panic. Hmm? The five sleepers were once again able to lay eyes on their victim. The scrawny kid was hesitating in front of the em entrance to a large ruined building. Fear clearly written on his dirty, pale face. It seemed as though he didn't know where to go, afraid to run into a dead end. Noticing them, he flinched and dove into the building with desperation in his eyes. You have nowhere to run now, rat, hissed the man who had lost his hand to Sunny's blade. Full of killing intent, the sleepers followed the crazy young man into the building. However, once they got inside, they saw no sign of the scared kid. The only thing they saw was a simple rock lying on the floor. As the one-armed man belatedly realized that something was wrong, the rock said in an ominous tone, Say goodbye to your lives! <laughs> a second later, a massive silhouette stepped out of the darkness. The man's eyes widened as the figure of a regal knight clad in a menacing black armor reflected in them. The creature was more than two meters tall, his gothic armor forged from a lusterless anthracite steel. Every part of the armor was decorated with intricate engravings that told a tale so horrifying that anyone would go insane from looking at them for too long. Maybe that's what he's done. <laughs> the helmet of the Black Knight was crowned with curved horns that might have been wings ones. In the narrow fissure of his visor, Two ghastly red flames were burning with in indescribable menace. Before the sleeper had time to react, a heavy black blade fell from above, effortlessly severing his body from head to groin, cutting through flesh, bone, and armor with similar ease. A torrent of blood surged to the floor. Climbing onto one of the supporting beams of the ruined cathedral, Sunny sat down and looked at the slaughter that was happening below. The bastard is in a really bad mood today. Well, have fun. Sometime later, as the echoes of screams began to fade away, he sighed and counted the corpses lying on the distant floor. It was hard to count, because most of them were in pieces. <laughs> Ooh. Making sure that not making sure that not one of the pursuers got away alive, Sonny frowned and shook his head. Six people. Their disappearance won't go unnoticed, especially if they were really up to no good. Huh. Why do I feel like I have just gotten myself in trouble? I guess he would be in even more trouble if they survived in a way. <clears throat> but then it's like, I was thinking it's like, because they know what he looks like. And it's like, well, it's the only person <laughs> more or less living in the city. So if you find him, you find him either way. So, hmm. But now they might be more like, okay, let's kill him. Like, fuck it. This is unacceptable. He killed six people. I mean, seven, because, or, no. Oh, yeah, I mean, no, six. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
A lot is happening. I don't feel like I mind the time skip at all, to be honest. So far, it isn't like weird. I thought it was going to be weirder. Like more like what the fuck actually happened. Like, But now I'm like, oh. I want to know what happened. So. Hmm. <laughs> I don't mind reading it like this. Yeah, fresh perspective. This is good. <laughs> we'll continue. <gasps> Chapter 100! Pew, 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 pew. <sighs> Celebrate! A <laughs> hundred chapters! <gasps> oh my god! Let's go! Oh, true! <laughs> True, 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 but we will go back later. <laughs> Chapter 100 Clear Conscience The Black Knight remained motionless for several minutes, silently observing the corpses of his enemies. Drops of blood fell from the blade of his fearsome greatsword, gathering into a puddle beneath his feet. The thoughts of the cruel creature were a mystery. To be honest, Sunny wasn't even sure that this unstoppable mountain of murderous black steel was sentient. In that regard, the monstrous inhabitants of the cursed city were a bit strange. Usually, nightmare creatures of higher classes possessed a, per a perverse form of intelligence, okay, which was often compared to that of humans, and sometimes even surpassed it. However, that rule did not apply to every monster in this eerie place. From Sunny's observations, the dwellers of the ruined city could be roughly divided into two groups. The first group considered of various creatures that came here from the outside from outside the wall. Be it from the labyrinth or from the depths of the dark sea. These abominable things more or less followed the unnatural laws of the spell that every awakened was familiar with. The second group was different. These creatures, he suspected, were either created from the remnants no <laughs> were either created from the remains of the ancient residents of the city or creepily had actually been them actually be uh -huh. the second group was different these creatures he suspected were either created from the remains of the ancient residents of the city or creepily had actually been them once the wraiths as he called them, called them were much more unfathomable and dangerous. Their powers and behavior refused to abide by any sort of sense or logic. Hmm. The Black Knight was one of these sinister rev revenants. That's why Sunny had trouble predicting his actions. Most of the time, the, reg the real devil was content... Con I can't read! Anymore. I have to go to the bathroom too. That's probably why. I'll be right back. <laughs> Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm 
That's why Sunny had trouble predicting his actions. Right, okay. Most of the time, the regal devil was content simply patrol was content simply patrolling the grand hall of the ruined cathedral and killing anything that dared to come inside. Just like he had killed those poor fools. With a sigh. <laughs> that was not planned. Sunny lay down on top of the support beam and, not paying any attention to the deadly height of his improvised resting spot, closed his eyes. He wanted to take a breath before continuing with his nightly errands. Soon, the sound of heavy footsteps informed him that the bastard had resumed his never-ending patrol. Good riddance. Despite the fact that nothing was disturbing his peace anymore, Sunny still felt strangely restless. Could you hear that? I was like, oh. Maybe you could hear that. <laughs> if you could hear that, that was my stomach. Uh, continuing. <laughs> la, 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 la. Despite the fact that nothing was disturbing his peace anymore, Sunny still felt strangely restless. His inner voice was in the mood to chat. Uh, Sunny, aren't you forgetting something? He frowned. What were there to forget? He was just catching his breath before going out again. He also had to wait for the right moment to scavenge through the possessions of these dead hunters. You just killed six people. Don't you feel guilty? That's right. I didn't even care. <laughs> Sonic was a little star startled by this question. Curious, he listened to his emotions and came to the conclusion that no, he did not feel guilty at all. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, this was his third time killing a human being. Granted, the first time happened inside a nightmare where people were supposed to be simple illusions. However, Sunny wasn't sure that he believed in that theory. The old slaver's anguish had felt awfully real to be just a figment of his imagination. The second time, well, he didn't want to think about that. That happened in the castle. Anyway, and that part of his life was over. <gasps> Who did he kill? Did he kill Nevis? No. No, he... Who knows? The third time was the cleanest of them all. These thugs were going to rob and kill him. Maybe Cassie. He can't kill Nephis. No way. Maybe he killed Cassie and fell off with Nephis because of it. Why would he kill Cassie? Or he just killed some random person that we will get to know later. Hopefully. But then again... Well, I was like, but then again, no, but... It's like, I already know he killed someone, so it will happen. <laughs> okay. The third time was the cleanest of them all. Those thugs were going to rob and kill him anyway. Sunny had seen through their intentions long before pulling on the invisible string and send sending their leader into the cold embrace of death. He could have tried to run away, but they were very rude. If the thugs had insulted just him, Sunny might have tried to end the confrontation without bloodshed. However, they insulted Nephis. Bastards deserved to die. Despite the fact that his relationship with Changing Star had become strained, okay, so she's alive, I guess, he still cared about her a great deal. Leaving the castle did not mean that he had forgotten their friendship. It's just that there were more reasons to leave them to stay. With a sigh, Sunny summoned the beautiful bottle made out of patterned blue glass. This was the farewell gift that Cassie had given him before their parting. He cherished the, his, this memory very much. Okay, so he did not kill any of them. Good. Then who the fuck did he kill? <laughs> Bringing the bottle to his lips, Sonny took several sips of cold, delicious water and opened his eyes. He didn't want to rest anymore. Better to get moving. Before venturing out again, Sunder returned to his room and walked over to a large iron chest that was standing in one of its corners. Exerting some strength, 
he lifted the heavy lid and admired his treasure pile. Inside the chest, more than a hundred beautiful soul shards were glowing softly in the dark. The sight of them always lifted Sonny's mood. Despite the fact that he himself had no use for the soul shards, they were still a valuable resource. Here in the Forgotten Shore, shards were a form of currency among the sleepers. A hundred of them was an unimaginable amount. After a lifetime of being a pauper, Sonny was finally rich. Money. I have so much money. <laughs> if a person wanted to live inside the castle walls, they had to pay. They had to pay. They had to pay a tribute of one soul shard every week. Those who could not afford it were forced to remain outside, living in a makeshift settlement just beyond the gates, which was often attacked by the monsters. Even so, they had to pay for food or go out and hunt themselves, which more often than not led to their deaths. Money. <laughs> Love the money. <laughs> With how much Sonny had gathered in these three months, he would have been able to live in the comfort of the castle for years, if he wanted to, which, of course, he did not. Why would he pay for accommodations when he already had a palace of his own? One with no noisy neighbors and a fearsome guardian protecting the premises, no less. Damn. Putting two new soul shards in the chest, Sonny glanced at his dragon horde one last time and closed the lid with a satisfied smile. He needs to invest his money. Yeah, he's just keeping it in a box, hmm? That's not gonna make him more money. <laughs> That's not gonna turn into more money if he just lets them sit in the chest, will it? Hmm? <laughs> ah, perhaps it was time to visit the castle again and buy a few things. No, no. He had already bought everything he needed the last time. Spending too many shards would make people doubt that he had, was a pathetic. Spending too many shards would make people doubt that he was as pathetic as everyone thought he was. Of all the sleepers in the castle, only three people knew that he was not just good. Ah. Only three people knew that he was not just good at hiding in the shadows and avoiding danger. They were Nephis, Cassie. And Caster! <gasps> that damn bastard. Caster! <gasps> no way! He's in the castle. <gasps> Interesting. Okay. So we didn't kill Caster. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yes, he was the shad. The one is like, oh, I'm the best. But he, he uh, on the list of like the 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 rankings of the, I guess they're children, right? Then they're children. Nephis was uh, number one, and Castor is number two. I think I'm almost certain he's the one that got fucking knocked by Nephis in the. Um, in the uh, uh, the defense self defense class, which is not a self defense class, but like the the <laughs> fucking was it sword fighting? No, whatever the class. He beat Nephis. <gasps> what was it? Was it? Are you sure? I thought she'd never. I thought she didn't. Uh... I thought she did. Was it? Did he? How? She didn't use the aspect. He did. Okay. Was that the one that took, like, seconds? Because she beat all of the other ones. Right? Yes. Mm. She was holding back. He went all out. And he won closely. Okay. So it was close. Mm. Alright, yeah. I just remember that, like, 
from Sunny looking with the shadow, like, like, uh, looking uh, at the class with the shadow, I used to remember that he took away from that was that Nephis is crazy and strong. And then someone said, congrats, and he went mad. Oh, right, because she didn't try. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I had forgotten about that. Good to have someone that's read this. <laughs> mm. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if he, if Caster is one of the reasons why, why Sunny left. You read it as well. I did, but it was a long time ago, and I think you've read it more than once. Once. Have you not? Have you only read it once? Crazy if you remember that shit otherwise. I think it's okay, yeah the <laughs> See? <laughs> that is more than one. See? Exactly. <laughs> Unfair. <laughs> but yes. Caster is back. Fucking yes. Cat Racer is favorite. I'm happy. I'm happy. Let's see where it goes. Let's see what <laughs> Many times then. <laughs> Chapter 101 Turf War Caster had been lucky enough to enter the Dream Realm near the city and arrive at the castle much earlier than the three of them. By the time Sunny, Nephis, and Cassie had found their way to the human settlement, he was already in good standing there, of course. Despite the fact that there were a lot of opportunities for a talented legacy to rise through the ranks of Gunlog's army, he had nevertheless decided to remain independent and eventually joined the Changing Stars cohort, cohort, drastically raising their combat strength and reputation. Mm. Looking back, that was when all of Sunny's problems had really started. Yeah, I figured. That's right, it was all his fault, not mine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we just killed someone, but okay. Grinding his teeth, Sunny kicked the heavy chest and cursed under his breath. Then, acting as if nothing had happened, he smiled brightly and left the hidden chamber once again. Down below, things were getting interesting. Attracted by the smell of blood, several monsters tried to enter the ruined cathedral to feast on the fresh corpses. However, the Black Knight was as full, as <laughs> was as full of wrath as ever. <laughs> Just as Sunny climbed onto the support beams, he was finishing off a large creature that looked like a praying mantis made of human skin. <laughs> disgusting <laughs> no initially Sunny planned to take a look at the material possessions left behind by the five un unfortunate thugs but the sight of the ferocious battle made him change his mind he would have to do it later besides his shadow had already looked through the bloody remains and came to the conclusion that there was nothing really valuable among the dismembered corpses not wasting any more time, Sunny escaped through the roof of the cathedral and retraced his steps to the place where he had fought the blood fiend. The body of the hunting party's leader was still there. Of course, his memories had long disappeared, leaving the bearded man dressed only in rags. The heavy battle axe was gone too. Sunny sighed. That's why killing people is not worth it. The shadow covered its face with a hand and shook its head dejectedly trying to express that his wording was nothing short of unfortunate. Sunny frowned. What? It's not! And for him, it was doubtly so. When one awakened killed another, they received a considerable portion of the enemy's soul essence without having to shatter their soul shard. Oh. Sunny, however, was not an ordinary awakened. His aspect was based on consuming shadow fragments instead. That meant that even if his enemy had absorbed hundreds of soul shards in the past, Sunny would only receive the number of shadow fragments matching their rank and class, just like he would after slaying a nightmare creature. Since all sleepers were mere dormant beasts, in this case, the number was... 1. 
Just one fragment away from 400, Sunny said, a bit disheartened. All that work for nothing. Some small, rational piece of his mind was actually relieved that killing humans was not very lucrative. Otherwise, in his state, no, he wouldn't. Surely. Ah, uh, wouldn't what? Sunny blinked a couple of times, waiting for his inner voice to answer. However, it was strangely silent. Shrugging, he bent down and searched the dead man's body, hoping to find something of value. However, he was left disappointed. There was no pouch full of soul shards as he had imagined. All Sonny found was a strange piece of fabric that had been secretively tucked away into the tall, tall thug's shirt. Looking at the fabric, he noticed crude shapes drawn on it with ink. Some shapes looked strangely familiar. Is that... a map? Indeed, it was a primitive map. The shapes he recognized were the various landmarks located in the neighboring parts of the cursed city. Sunny knew many of them by heart, and had even explored a few in the past. A treasure map? A treasure? Suddenly, the strange timing of the hunting party's arrival and their lack of experience made perfect sense. They weren't actually hunters. Instead, they were a bunch of fools who had been swindled by some smart person back at the castle into buying a fake treasure map. At least, that was the most likely possibility. However... But what if it's real? Sunny blinked, looking at the map with a mix of distaste and, avari and avarice. Avarice? Avarice. Avarice. Ah, greed. Ah, avarice. Oh. Avarice. Hunger, hunger for more. <laughs> more. He couldn't decide whether he should try and follow it or throw it away. Luckily, his thought process was interrupted by a thunderous crash. One of the buildings not far from where he was standing suddenly collapsed filling the streets with a cloud of dust and flying debris. A massive shape flew through the air and heavily crashed against another wall, causing an avalanche of stones to fall down. The creature tried to, stay the creature tried to stand up, but then twitched and grew still, spilling rivers of fetid blood all over the pavement. It was unmistakably dead. Sunny quickly hid the map in his armor and dove into the shadows, trying to understand what was happening. Somewhere near, ferocious roars and the sound of st steel clashing against steel could be heard, growing closer with each second. Strangely, there were no humans void. There were no human voices. A battle between nightmare creatures? Such things were not rare in the cursed city, but to Sunny's knowledge, there were very few things capable of challenging the current masters of this street and the adjacent square. These creatures were not the most powerful among the inhabitants of the city, but due to their unique characteristics, Sunny tried to avoid them like the plague. He saw several monsters which much he saw several monsters much more powerful than anything he would be willing to take on, ending up sliced and diced into tiny pieces on that square. However, none of them were was able to give the protectors of the square as much trouble as they were having right now at least judging by the desperate sounds of the battle. Intrigued, Sunny decided to take a look. Hidden in the shadows, he climbed up the tall wall of an ancient building and soon arrived on its roof. Watching his footing, Sunny walked, toward Sunny walked forward until he reached the opposite edge of the building. From there, he could see the wide square in all its dark glory. In the middle of the square, a moving statue was fighting against several hulking monsters. <laughs> a statue? <laughs> oh, nightmare creature gangs, let's go! <laughs> <clears throat> I can feel my voice starting to not be happy anymore. But I will continue with chapter 102, Stone Saint. Huh? 
Saint. What the fuck? What the fuck? On a dark square surrounded by ruins of one once magnificent buildings, a vicious battle was coming to an end. The remains of its solemn protectors were lying on the cold cobblestones, ruthlessly shattered into pieces. I'm still getting this damn food. God's sake. Mm hmm. Okay. Sonny blinks in shock. They actually lost. He was really astonished. The living statues that used to guard the square were a very tough bunch. As far as nightmare creatures of the cursed city went, they weren't the most formidable in terms of size and physical might. However, the strange bodies were extremely durable and capable of withstanding truly devastating amounts of damage. Aside from that, the stalwart stone warriors were also disciplined, proficient in the use of weapons and utterly deadly. They were able to perfectly coordinate their movements, using strategy and tactics to silently overwhelm opponents whose power far surpassed their own. Countless monsters fell to their blades. That's why Sunny had always avoided getting into a confrontation with these weird creatures. Even though they weren't fallen by rank, the stone revenants represented a threat that was enough to make him wary. However, now the ownership of the square was about to change hands. The bodies of the previous masters lay shattered to pieces. In death, they looked just like broken statues. Even their metal armor and weapons had turned to stone after the wielders were destroyed. There were five or six of, of these stone piles scattered around the square, while the attackers seemed to have lost only three of their numbers, including the massive monster that had been sent crashing through a building earlier. Each body towered above the dark cobblestones like a small hill. The invaders were of a type of the nightmare creature that Sunny had never seen before. These new menacing monsters looked like giant spiders with bodies covered in thick plates of wrought iron. They moved with terrifying speed and force, sending cracks running through the cobblestones with each step. Ugh. There were currently two of them left on the square, circling around the lone surviving stone warrior. The last of the living statues seemed to be a female. Compared to the spiders, she was almost comically small in stature, standing no taller than Sunny himself. The graceful stone creature was armed with a sword and a round shield, wearing a plate armor that covered most of her body, leaving only the eyes exposed, or rather, two rubies burning with crimson flames that these creatures had instead. Or rather, two rubies burning with crimson flames that these creatures had instead of ice. Her armor and weapons were black in color, forged from some unknown and incredibly heavy stone-like alloy. Of course, in reality, they were, they were made out of the same stone as their wielder. However, the dark force that had turned the granite body of this nightmare creature into the strange approximation of flesh had also turned the stone armor into metal. Currently, the last of the living statues was standing with her shield raised, the blade of the sword resting on its rim. Her head was lowered, ruby eyes silently flowing, flowing, flowing. Her head was lowered, ruby eyes silently following the movements of the two spider monsters. Sunny didn't know for sure, but he suspected that these spiders were both fallen beasts. In any case, the stone woman was doomed. Her enemies were just toying with her, savoring the helplessness of their victim before finishing the job. He didn't really care. In fact, he was waiting for the show. Watching nightmare creatures slaughter each other was one of his favorite pastimes. And the best thing about it was that he didn't matter who won. Because it didn't matter who won. Come on, get her! Damn. <laughs> However, in the next moment, he was surprised. In a strange turn of events, the stone monster launched at the spiders first, calmly striking her sword against the rim of the shield. Ha <laughs> Calmly striking her sword against the rim of the shield twice, she dashed forward with grim determination. 
The spider she was aiming at was a second too late to react. However, due to its superior physical form, it was still able to meet the sudden onslaught with a vicious strike of its own. One of its legs shot forward, threatening a shatter, threatening to shatter the stone body of the attacking living statue into tiny pieces. The smaller creature deflected the blow with her sword and bashed the spider with the round shield, putting all of her weight and inhuman strength into the strike. Sunny blinked as the massive body of the fallen beast was thrown back and toppled over. The black sword immediately lashed out, sending a shockwave through the spider's guts. A rain of strikes fell on the iron surface of the monster's abdomen, filling the square with the clangor of metal. The stone warrior attacked with savage ferocity, using both the sword and the shield to inflict as much damage as possible in a short amount of time. Just as the iron plate protecting the soft innards of the monsters cracked, the second beast joined the fray. The following bloodbath has, was nothing short of horrifying. Despite the fact that the spiders were much faster and stronger, the, st the steadfast stone wraith kept up with them for a while. Her indomitable will and ruthless resolve were enough to give the fearsome creatures pause. Moving with deadly precision of a bloodthirsty killing machine, the living statue completely disregarded self-preservation in favor of making her enemies suffer. Oh, evil. It seemed as though she was determined to take them to the grave with her. Soon, the terrible wounds on her body ac accumulated, making the stone creature look like a vandalized piece of macabre art. Macabre? Macabre art. Stop messaging. However, the spiders were no better. Their fetid blood was spilling everywhere, painting the whole square red. Severed limbs and shards of cracked iron littered the ground, mixing with the shattered remains of the fallen stone warriors. Finally, one of the spiders fell heavily to the ground and twitched, drawing its last breath. The remaining beast lunged at the staggered stone monster, its countless eyes burning with fury. The round black shield rose, no, the round black shield rose one last time and then flew aside, torn away along with the right arm of the stal stalwart living statue. However, okay, I'm getting a little bit tired of the howevers. <laughs> it's like, there is so many howevers, it's insane. Almost at the same time, the blade of her sword pierced through the massive beast's skull ending its life just a moment before breaking apart and turning to stone. Sunny shook his head. What an impressive sight. A lowly awakened creature slaying two fallen beasts. Midnight Shard would have liked that fierce last... <sighs> Midnight Shard would have liked that fierce last stand a lot. Come to think of it, this was nothing short of inconceivable. However... <sighs> The graceful stone warrior paid dearly for performing the bloody miracle. Staggering once again, she fell heavily to the ground, clearly done for. The battle for the ownership of the dark square was over. Nobody won. Oh, sad. However, they will grow in you. Dude, however, they probably already have. And however, every time I see however, I have to say it as However, <laughs> I think I will stop there for now. Coop the grace. Oh. We will stop there for today. We've been going for one and a half hours. I really enjoyed it. We got through some chapters. <laughs> one and six and seven and eight and nine. And nine. 100, 101, 102. Seven chapters. It is a good ending. Nobody won. <laughs> Yay! And the time skip was better than I thought it would be. So that's also very good. I was scared. <laughs> but I like this. I like this. No, no. This or no, no, food gang, food gang, 
Food laundry gang. <laughs> it's early. It's fucking 4.30. But yes. Voice is dying. Don't have time. Have to do shit. And I have so fucking many messages to answer. <sighs> of course. So, wah. Wawa time. There was a hiccup. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Volume 2 of Shadow Slave. At least the beginning of Volume 2. Feel free to follow me on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, not Twitter. Become a Patreon if you would like and join the Discord. Do it. <laughs> I'm very excited to continue. I'm so happy that we reached Volume 2. I look forward to reaching many, 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 many more volumes. And I don't ever want to stop. <laughs> so thank you for still enjoying it so I can keep doing it. I would probably do it anyway, to be honest. But still, the support helps a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow if everything goes well. Maybe not actually, but otherwise I'll do it on Thursday. Techno! I still like you though. Bye! I forgot to say hey to